Burbank, California, you're about to see the greatest show that nobody watches. The Fork in the Row with Ricky Rackman and Grant Reynolds. Tonight we have Five Finger Death Punches, Chris Kale, skateboard legend Christian Hosoy, and we also have NASCAR drivers Trevor Bain and Paul Menard who are going to talk Twitter, and Ricky enjoys a heavy metal burger. And also we have ridiculous banter from Ricky and Grant and all the nonsensical nonsense that you come to expect from Ricky. The Fork Show. BAM! matter how much prep or anything that we do we're still never going to be ready yeah are we? yeah god damn yeah yeah hey welcome to fork in the road this is show number three and, and, for, those, and for those of you people that are have found us i just want to say i appreciate it because the links aren't really working and it's at spacebrainstudios.com we're eventually getting this website up that's going you're going to go to the forkshow.com and it's going to go right to our show but in the meantime, uh, just go to Space Brain Studios. But I don't even have to take that because you're there right now and you're watching it. How about Tiny? How cool is that? It's okay. Come on. No, I like Tiny. Tiny's got, I, he's got more energy than that. I'm you gonna, thought it was going to be bigger than that. Yeah, Tiny's a bigger guy. And I thought that it was <laughs> hey, going to be much, but much better than that. But yeah, Tiny. <laughs> I thought it was going to be bigger too. I, I'm Next got, time he has to wear the Mohawk. That Next time he has tiny. to wear the Mohawk. Anyway, I'm Ricky Rackman. I'm Grant Reynolds. Also, let's give it up for the dude. The dude is still here with us. What's up, dude? What's up, man? What's up? <laughs> we have a. How do I put this? The, the system that we're trying to work out here. We're trying to do it so we can take calls and stuff like that. We're trying to have a real show. Is what we're trying right, to do. Right. We really are. And it really is. I believe that we really are the best show that nobody watches. I think we have two viewers. Three. We, no, 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 no. We, yeah, we have more Understood. than that. We work, but I'm working really hard getting this show together. We've got some great stuff. Very soon, Chris Kale from Five Finger Death Punch, <laughs> which is probably, like I'd say, one of the biggest metal bands around right now. Pretty heavy. And they're going to be playing here on the Mayhem Festival in just a couple seconds. Christian Asoy. In just Asoy. a couple seconds. Christian Asoy. Dude, in skateboard studio. legend in Christian studio. Asoy. Come on. That's going to be good. And I think we're going to be able to take calls from... I can't see what that says. What is that? This even is just say? this kind of just start Christian over. Christian is not. What does it say? Answering. Christian is not. Well, you're not. Answering. You're supposed to call Chris Kale. Chris Kale. Oh, oh, oh my oh. God. Okay. This is working really good today so far. We're gonna it? have. Food. I'm telling everybody. Hey, you got to watch the show today because we have got so much stuff going on, and then it doesn't matter how much time we start ready to prepare it. Everything just falls apart at 5:01. But I will say this, man. It always works out somehow. It always works out. Why is that? I can't, why do I hear phones ringing? Do you hear phones ringing? That's your phone, brother. No, it's not my Turn phone. Your phone. My phone's off. ringing. For that was one, one of the, the, the one break. people. Like, we're, we're starting to post all the stuff on YouTube of all the interviews that we did. We've got yeah. Stephen Piercy's. We've got. That was a good interview. Trip. That was a really good interview. Yeah. That was really fun. And, and the thing is, we didn't want to start having guests right away. Well, we've only had two shows because then everybody's like, oh, what guests are you going to have? But now it's like we're liking having guests here, and yeah. we're going to have guests on. We've got to get rid of Tiny. Stuff. Tiny's intro is just not going to cut it. No, though, but, we're, but yeah. we're, we're going to start trimming the fat a little bit. <laughs> and, and again, I want to thank Grant, who, for people that don't know, you know, the reason the show is called Fork in the Road is that we're both at a fork in the road, both going through the divorces. No, I'm not. Both. You're not going through divorce? No, no I'm not in a fork in the road. Well, I'm, I'm just kidding. Just okay, ahead, last right. week... I said I wasn't in a fork in the road, or I never had a midlife crisis, and I think I'm wrong. I think I am having one now. <laughs> I would have to totally <laughs> agree with you, man. Because what happened is we're both going through the divorce that we mentioned, and we're both roommates, which is weird enough having a roommate now at this point in my life and having you as a roommate, but it's really not like that because the last time I saw when was, tell everybody when the last time I saw you was, Grant. It's probably been last week at the show. No, here. Yeah. It was the last I mean, time I saw literally you. right here. And then I, I see you I've here right gone, now. I've been gone 10 days. I've been in San Diego. Had the kids, 
did a little beachy thing, did the safari thing, did, uh, took my kids sailing under the Coronado Bridge. Did I ever tell you a story when I saw the guy commit suicide off the bridge? Did I ever tell you With story? your kids? No, I didn't see it with my kids, but I actually was driving with an ex-girlfriend. It was early in the morning, about 7 o'clock in the morning, and Coronado Bridge, you know how high it is. It's pretty high. So I'm pulling up on the bridge, and I look, and there's this guy parked in the right-hand lane, and I'm getting ready to roll the window down and go, hey, you st And I see the guy look back at me, and I see the look on his face, and the guy jumps. And the, my girlfriend at the time just let out this horrible shriek, ah! And I was like, give me the phone. So I, you know, I get out of the car, and a whole bunch of other cars stop, and I sit there, and I dial 911, and I say, hey, I just watched a guy jump off the Coronado Bridge. And she's like, well, how do you know? And I was just like, uh, there should be a show about 911 operators well, and the questions they ask. He was standing there, and now he's not. Yeah. And I want, I'm telling you, when I looked down, the guy was, he jumped, when he jumped, he was six feet. He was nine feet by the time he was, when he hit the water. I mean, it's like hitting cement. I mean, he was, he was gone, though. And his and body? I, oh, yeah. And then his I, body didn't just sink? No, that guy just splat, and it was, I mean, he was pancaked. And about an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes later, we sailed underneath the bridge. I actually have photos of it from, with my kids. With the body? The police were down there, you Harbor have Patrol. Of the body? No, I don't have pictures of the body. No, I don't want, I don't like, yeah. like, I'm not gonna those, one of those guys that likes watching, like, remember when they used to make those faces of death videos and stuff like that? Oh, I love that I, stuff. I can't watch that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, but that stuff's like 80s. The, today's stuff would be a lot more hardcore. You can just go on YouTube and see that kind of stuff nowadays. I was watching, okay, I, 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 got, I got to talk about something that was on YouTube. Can we talk about that Snowden thing right now, or are we not doing that because we're getting Chris Kale on the phone? Probably not. My favorite thing is you keep calling him Andrew Snowden. It's Edward Snowden. Edward Snowden. Edward Snowden. For people that don't know, Edward Snowden, uh, he's, he's been the top trending thing in the mail, I mean in the news, about everything right now because he's an NSA He's whistleblower in a pretty, sense, Well, right? he's a hacker. This guy hacked all these people. You know, they, he hacked into China's computers. He's, he's hacked into a lot of sensitive material, essentially. And funny enough, the guy is cooped up right now at the airport in Russia, right? And Putin has now stepped in and gone like, yeah, we're not going to hand him over. And John Kerry's like, please do what's right. And Putin's just kind of like, do what's right. We don't have anything going on with you. So there's this weird kind of international kind of tap dance going on to see what we're going to do with this 30-year-old punk who's a computer whiz. That's why I like having Grant Reynolds on the show, because when Grant's here, he can talk about it and the way that he saw the whole Snowden situation. I saw it a little bit different. First, dude, <laughs> can, you play, can you show us a picture of what Andrew Snowden looks like? Yep. Show us a picture. This is what Andrew Snowden looks like. Okay, that's what Andrew yeah, Snowden looks like. That's when Edward, I saw that, okay. Edward, Edward, oh, see? Edward, Edward. Now, now I want to play you a video. <laughs> that is what Edward Snowden looks like. Yeah. You saw that. You know all the stuff about him. I saw it, and I said, dude, why does Edward Snowden look so familiar? And then I saw this video, and I figured it out. <laughs> Edward Snowden <laughs> and the rapper Snow from back in the 90s are the same people. Look at that. That is the same guy, right? That's Snowden. It kind of looks like it him. It looks man. just like him. If and he's got a song shape, called He's that. got a song called Informer. It's you know, it's uncanny, man. I can see it there. There it is right there. Now with the dark shades. Look at that. That's there the same is. dude. Right How there. come nobody nobody can tell? Okay, you can get rid of that dude. How come nobody can tell that that dude is the same Edward Snow Edward Snowden and Snow? What year was that? 1990? 90. Do you remember what the words were to that song? I like it, boom, boom, man. <laughs> Some, that's all I, I, all I know is the chorus on that one, man. That was for you, Tiny. We're waiting for Chris Kale. Is Chris Kale on the phone with us right now, or should we just screw him and let's go to Chris and bring Christian Hisoy in? You know, he's not answering. His dude. So, he's probably you know, in traffic. Those freaking metal dudes. That's, well, I'll tell you what. Um, Christian Hisoy, who obviously is a skateboard legend and has an incredible story. For people that don't know, let's play a little video of some of Christian's old school skating. And the guy's still skating, still ripping. Grant, we got to bring that in. We went to a skate park not that long ago and, yeah. and went skating again. And yeah. I love skateboarding. Skateboarding was always a really big part of my life. Still is. And, uh, still is. I yeah. just don't skate anymore. So let, let's, let's watch this video. This is uh, Christian Asoy. Let's bring him in the studio right now, okay? Christian, come on in let's here. Let's play bro. this video.
That was Christian Hisoy. When was that, Christian? That was probably 1984. This was at a 85, point. 85, 84. I think 84. I think it's 85 Del Mar. Yeah. I think that's where I'm it is. I'm pretty sure it's one of those. This is one thing I want to bring up real quick. And then Grant brought Christian and let Grant kind of take over from there. But this was at a time when a lot of people were really getting into a lot of punk rock. And punk seemed to be the skating thing. And you busted out the Human League for that contest. Was that your choice? It was either that or Informer. That was a Human League. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't pick that song. But, you know, it, it was uh, a sign of the times. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Hey, so uh, we're, I, I'm going through uh, videos, trying to look at videos. We we're, we're both like, oh, we got to see a video of the Christ Air. Tough to find a Christ Air video, man. Yeah, you know, uh, there's, there's actually a clip in my uh, documentary yeah. that's at the Skate Escape contest where Chili Peppers played live. Yeah. Poor Man was announcing with Skate Master Tate. And there's a clip in there where I do one in my contest run. That's uh, were they that brutal? Is it that hard? Is it that hard? For, for people don't that don't people know, doing them for much. people that don't know, because um, there's some people that aren't really necessarily into skating. Tell people what a Christ Air was and what year you did that in. Well, I did it in 1985. It was right about 1985, the end of 85, 86. Because by 86, I was doing them a lot, and it came up just I was sitting there. These guys were doing these no-footed airs, you know, kicking their feet off. I was doing all the one-footed airs and stuff like this. And then I was like thinking, and I was like, man, you could put your feet together, throw your arms straight out, and it'll be like a crucifix. And I said, my name's Christ. <laughs> you know what I mean? This will be sick, and it'll be the Christ there. And I said, here you go. I'm going to try Christ there. Boom! And it took me probably a couple tries so he and just did it. And it stuck because all the other guys that did I the no-footed air didn't claim it. And so here I am, just came up, and I said, it's mine. Boom. Yeah, it was and, a showstopper, and, uh, too, yeah. man. People so would in, see that. In midair, yeah. like this, and then put your skateboard back under you and yeah. skate. Yeah. Skateboarding at that time was still a very rebellious underground sport. You didn't have the people like the Ryan Shecklers who grew up to become a pro skater. You were right at that wave when skaters were starting to make some pretty good money, right? Yeah, I mean, we were the ones that kind of like said, hey, we're worth something. We got value here. You know, we're going to bring a crowd. We're going we're gonna to put on a show. Yeah. And I said, here, you want to do a demo? Let's do a demo and watch. We're going to invite people out and we're going to, you know, do an amazing, you know, whatever you want to call it. We called it like having fun on a ramp. But it was just so, so raw back then because... It went from the 70s, which was kind of like sidewalk surfing, doing slalom to backyard pools to skate parks. And then it was a real quick implode and skate park shut down. Ramps were built. Yeah. And now it was all backyard, grassroots again. Thrasher Magazine came out. It was underground. We were like being kind of a little bit more on the rebellious side of, of where skateboarding was trying to get its, you know, I guess, uh, business aspects. So we took it to a whole another place, and it was a well worth... It happened when punk rock music came in yeah. as well. Yeah, and so we teamed together, and we had this movement of being individualists, being artists, being creative, you know, having, having this uh, lifestyle rather than a sport, rather than, you know, something that you do, a talent. It's more like, this is who we are. This is what we do. And it took that to finally come to a place of, like, we were in these backyards going, okay, people want to see this. I was like, now they're going to want to see it. Then we started doing contests in stadiums. Next thing you know, we're doing demos for thousands of people. I'm asking for tons of money from sponsors, shoe sponsors. You were getting it. Wheel sponsors, clothing sponsors. And, you know, Jimmy Z came out right there in the mid-'80s. And that was a huge, big, you know, fashion, skateboarding, surf, models, partying, VIP. You know what I mean? It was this whole explosion that Where were you kind living of created at the time? this... This uh, uh, rock star kind of lifestyle. Where you I was up? Hollywood. You were in Hollywood? Yeah. Nice. Which a lot of skaters at that time, I mean. I ran into this guy all the time. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you did. <laughs> but, sure we don't you did. but we don't remember that. <laughs> yeah. It but, was always in passing, you know, right. at all the spots, but, you know. But, but Christian, for people that don't, don't know, and I know a lot of people you do know, at that point, you were a rock star. Yeah. I mean, people were ripping off that, that Rising Sun logo, and everybody was doing that. And Christian Hosoy was, dare I say, the Axl Rose of skateboarding at that time. And you especially were living a rock star lifestyle. 
Yeah, and you know, along with that lifestyle came all the the things that come with it, and it's partying, girls, money, traveling. I mean, I was young too. I was what seventeen years old. Started my own company. It was pro at fifteen, traveling, and now without any supervision, get you and travel in the world with a ton of money in my pocket, and and plus I was. Smoking weed, doing acid, all the all the drugs that we did at a young age, 12, 13 years old, cocaine, 15. Next thing you know, I'm like, cocaine's affecting my skateboarding career. I need to quit at 17. I'm quitting cocaine at 17. You know, to think that we were doing stuff like, I look at kids now at 17, I go, man, where's your mom? You know, you need to get home. But back then, it was just such a different environment and atmosphere, you know, that with that rock star lifestyle came a lot of like pressure to have to fit in and i wanted to be the number one guy i wanted to be the guy who was kind of like coat you know basically bringing everybody to the party vip room and i did that but i always had to jump through these hoops of being the guy and it came with the drugs it came with the girls and and at the end of the day i thought i was number one i thought i like had it all you know i have all the girls but never have one you know what I mean? I had all the money, had all the friends, but really I didn't have any close ones. So there's this element of like, you know, you're, you're constantly just trying to put on a show. And in that rock star lifestyle, I think that's where rock stars get kind of caught up in their... You believe your own hype. Yeah, you believe your own hype. You become so consumed with money and everybody telling you're the greatest when it's not there. All of a sudden you get depressed. You feel oppressed. The next thing you know, they're their talent and their gifts are being thrown away by drugs and alcoholism and what stuff did, like that. I mean, we've witnessed it to so many of our friends that have not even made it. And it's sad and, and really, you know, what hor happened, horrible uh, that that has happened to some of the greats, mm -hmm. some of the greats. What happened to you to, to, to what was the wake up call? What was the, I'm sure there were several of them. What was the first wake up call like? Well, I got to get, I got to get this in one bag here and get back on the ramp and do the right thing or whatever. It you know, there you was said. little ones. Like I said, I was like, okay, I, I stayed up all night to enter a contest. I think it was, I was 17 years old, showed up with Jay Adams. We were up all night partying and I was doing blow the whole night. And next thing you know, I got a contest and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to kill this thing. You know, no big deal. Stay up all night, win the contest. I went and I got third place and I was like, man, I, I could have easily won that. And that's when I quit. And I said, you know what, this isn't working for me. And I quit. So a little tune up of my life, you know, kind of like shook me up a little bit, yeah. but it was for my own glory at the time. And so for me, that really wasn't something that changed me. It was just the tune up. It was how I got better at, you know, what I right. wanted winning competitions. And then there came a point where I was just you know, trying to find love, and I was trying to find it in what I say all the wrong places because I was trying to find it in girls, trying to find it in money, fame, popularity, you know, whether it be owning my own company, being a world champion, winning another trophy, getting another cover. I mean, those things were like, I had to have that or else I felt like, you know, it, it's slipping between your fingers, you know, at the time. But when that wasn't working for me in the 80s, all of a sudden I was like, well, I've got as much as you could eat. Now what? And so I went into full-blown drug addiction, 90s, like hardcore down into the dark side. I went into the dark side trying to get my creative side going. A lot of people go, yeah, I'm doing psychedelics to get my creative. I went into hardcore drug abuse, and it was crystal meth and crack. And, you know, I, I did it all trying to find myself. But crystal meth was the one that I really got a hold of me. And, and I went and I did that for eight years. And that's when I was like, okay. I'm going to push it to the limit and you know what people want to get high the whole reason you get high is to get as close to the edge without falling off and then you had a good one if you didn't get close to the edge you're wasting your money and so for me it was always trying to get close to the edge of like dying without dying and then I thought I was thrill seeking and everyone's trying to thrill seek in that area and I was still trying to find my own identity I think you know when I look back in hindsight that it's like this this whole facade of like trying to find your inner your inner man and you're trying to just discover who you are and what you you know you want to do and so for me it, it just nothing satisfied me it was like my buck my, my life was like a bucket full of holes I kept putting that stuff in and it just kept draining out and draining out to the point where I was just like empty at the end of the day and finally when I 
made a horrible decision to carry a bunch of drugs on an airplane. You know, it's <laughs> yeah, kind of like... Stop for a second, because right? this is when the story yeah, this, yeah. really takes in. For people that are yeah. just tuning in, we've got skateboarding legend Christian Asoy. We're talking about... The, I mean, if there was somebody, I mean, Christian, you, the story that you're telling me, I've heard so many times, but yeah. it's all rock stars. This is, you lived the rock star lifestyle in skateboarding. It wasn't, and this wasn't the X Games, the sponsors, the, even though you did have some battles with Tony Hawk, this wasn't when Tony Hawk was this multi-millionaire corporate machine. You really were living the full-blown rock star lifestyle, and then something took a real big turn. Yeah, and that's when I finally made a horrible decision to take the drugs on an airplane, not knowing the repercussions of it. You know, we're going to be 10 years in federal prison. and But at the same time, you know, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. You know, now you really that I look that? back. You really believe for that? For sure, because for a kid like me, Ricky knows, you know, I grew up in Hollywood, had everything on a silver platter. For me to stop and then with being a world champion, everybody's telling you, come on in, come to my party. We just want you here to make me look good because you're here at my party. And I could live that way for the rest of my life if I wanted to on the coattails of what I've done. So for me, it was like I was stuck. Everybody gave me drugs all the time. All I had to do was show up, and they're like, Christian Asoy, you do drugs? I'll say, come over here. I'll give them to you for free. And that's what's the problem in Hollywood, that everybody's trying to you know, be somebody so they have all these people around, and they think they have to have all these things that make you feel like you're, all the substance that makes you feel like you're, you know, a rock right. star. And right. everyone wants to be a rock star. Let's just put it that way. I don't care if you're a nobody. You want to feel what that feels like. And it's just popularity. It's just being the man. It's having power and, and, and stuff like that. But it finally came to that point. And I'm so thankful that it happened because if it didn't happen, I don't know whether I would have died, I killed somebody, or I would still be out there on the street thinking I'm number one in drug houses or just still at the club, you know, hanging out, you know, trying to get things to go or doing what I said, living off the coattails of being the rock star, uh, uh, pro skateboarder, number one back in the 80s. I'm cool to hang out with guy. You know what I mean? Real quick, though, because we kind of brushed over it. What is Chris on the phone now? Tell them we'll call him back in like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the whole, whole schedule is done. Dude, how, how, we've got, how we've well got spoken? We've got Chris, we've got Chris Kale, Five Finger Death Punch, calling in <laughs> in, in a couple minutes, but I, I still want to continue this conversation with Christian Asoy. You mentioned getting on the plane, and you didn't really talk about what you did get arrested. Oh, yeah, I got arrested right there at the airport, Honolulu Airport. And how, many, how much drugs did you have? I had like over a pound of crystal meth on me, just in a hip sack underneath my clothes. You know, just thinking I was untouchable, that I could get away with it because I've been through a million airports, carried ounces of weed with me to Japan and all over the world thinking, you know, if, if I can get away with it there, why couldn't I get away with it, you know, here just with something different? And I've never been searched before. So why would they search me now? A pound of meth is a ton of meth. Yeah, when you right? get busted with a pound, they don't think that's for personal consumption, correct? Yeah. It's that's a ton of it meth. It won't pass for personal <laughs> consumption. So what happened? So I ended up getting arrested, and I go to, you know, basically you get your first phone call. First I go in. And I walk in, and everybody was like, Krishna Soy, what's up, dude? I had your board when I was a kid. And I'm like, what are you doing here? He's like, oh, I'm here for murder. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like really? You know? <laughs> I'm like, what oh, am man. I doing here? You know, like all of a sudden, reality sets in. They're telling me I'm going to do 10 years, the, the, the police, when I got arrested. And I thought, okay, right on, Dano, sure. Okay, sure, you're just trying to break me, trying to get me to, like, tell on somebody to get, you know, somebody else busted. And and I get there, and he's going, yeah. I'm like, well, what are you doing, you know? And he goes, well, I'm doing 140 years, oh. you know, double life sentence. And I'm like, so what is my case? He goes, oh, bro, 10 years, walk in the park, gravy, bra. You'll be, oh. you'll be out of here in no time. And I was like... Okay, this guy's telling me I'm doing 10 years. There we're telling me I'm doing 10 years. Sounds like to me like I'm going to be doing 10. And all of a sudden, reality hit me. And I was like, this is not a joke. This is not going to be a walk in the... Even though I had a great like example of something that was like way longer, I was like, oh, I guess it is compared to yours. 140 <laughs> years, right? All of a sudden, 10 years doesn't sound <laughs> no. that bad. I mean, literally, in that moment, I was like, that's not that bad. But I thought it was a life sentence for me. 
10 years, I'm not going to make it. Yeah, There's no like way. A lot of time. Never even been to jail longer than two days. I was like, this is, this is not happening. And at that moment, they give you this first phone call. And I call my girlfriend who was waiting for me. And it's ironic how right before I got arrested, two, like three months before, she goes, I'm quitting drugs and I'm going to church. And I was like, going to church? I was like, sweet, I'll go. You know, I thought God's good. I'm good. You know, we're good. Drugs are good. Everything's good. And if you're good enough, you're going to go to a place called heaven probably. Probably, right? And so that's just my mentality. And I was a huge karma guy. And I call her up. I got her back using drugs, by the way. And she ended up coming to Hawaii with me. And I get arrested and I call her and I'm like, look, I'm looking at 10 years. And she goes, you know what? I love you. We just got to trust in God. And I was like, God? I'm like, I need an attorney. I need bail, babe. <laughs> you know, what are you, so, what are you talking about right now? And she's like, no, God's going to help us. And I just went, it, it was like all wow. heaven confronted me at that. My name's Christian. My nickname's Christ. I invented the Christ era. I mean, all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute. What in the world is going on? Somebody's and she said, trying to tell me something. Yeah, she said, go get a Bible. And that, that night. I went and got a Bible, never read a Bible in my whole life. I've been in a million hotel rooms, picking up that Bible, putting my weed underneath it, thinking, okay, no one's going to steal weed underneath a Bible. <laughs> 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 Who would do that? I mean, just think of that mentality right there. There's, there's this element of you believe in God, yeah. you believe there might be some supernatural thing going on, but really there was no education for me. I, I was never told. I never grew up in church. I never prayed. My parents were good people. They raised me well as a person to be generous, honest, loyal, you know, be a good friend and be, be like a, a, a stand up, you know, citizen that is, is somebody you'd want to be friends with, like a family member. You know, I grew up in Hawaii. Hawaii's huge family. It's aloha. It's, it's all about ohana. And so I grew up kind of like that. But when all of a sudden I opened up that Bible, it was like immediately, how's this? I opened it up to the first chapter. It says Genesis. I'm like, oh, that's a Star Trek movie. <laughs> and I was like, how trippy is that? Go to the back of the book. It's like revelation. I'm like, what is a revelation? You know? And then I go to the middle. It's all Psalms. I'm like, Psalms. What's Psalms? You know, and I'm looking and it's John, and then I go to Kings and I see Kings, and I'm like, ah, I can relate to King because, you know, me, I, I always felt like I was number one because that's how I had to get to be a number one is that I'm going to go. That was nothing was going to stop me from being the best in the world. Bruce Lee was my idol. And so for me, I wanted to be like Bruce Lee. And when I figured it out that I'm not going to be that in martial arts, and, and I got introduced to skateboarding at about six years old. That was it. And then I set that course. And nothing was going to stop me. And I ended up opening it up, looking at Kings, and it was like immediately God's, like, spoke its truth to me. Like, it, I immediately knew that I was created for a reason, that God had a purpose for my life, that it was my decisions that got me into my situation, and it was going to be my decisions in, in what directs the course of my life. And I, and I found that out the first day, like, that I opened up that Bible in a cell, so two-man like cell, like this big, by myself. And you know how you're always in a rock bottom experience. I'm sure you guys have been there. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe now. <laughs> Fork of the road. <laughs> that, that you go, God, if you'll do this, I'll do this. If you just get oh, me out of this situation. Oh, of I gave him one of those. I was like, just get me bail. Get me out of here. I won't do drugs again. I'll speak to kids. I'll change my life. I mean, I gave him this whole spiel the first night that I got there. And I went to go get my, like, um, bail hearing and he's like danger to the community threat to society no bail and i was like what's up god yes, I, did exa I was like what's up god and, I, and immediately i knew that it wasn't that which made me feel like god was real it was the commitment that i made to him that was real and it wasn't those circumstances of those things happening you know that he wasn't my butler but that he was like there and it was all of a sudden i I mean, it was like one of those things, the scales fall off and you realize and God speaks to your heart. And I swear it was like such a radical transformation. That's what you, we, that's what you, go ahead. Yeah, because well, we, we have to wrap this up, unfortunately, but I don't want you to leave right now. Just really quickly, tell us what you're doing now, because I mean, 
you've obviously turned your life around and you're still skating, but there's other stuff you're doing. You're also helping people. And, and tell us what you're doing now, Christian. Well, now I, I do Soy Skateboards. This is still my company. I'm a pastor at the Sanctuary Church. We have uh, services down in Orange County that we do in the morning. And then we do a service at night, Sunday nights, down in downtown L.A. Yeah. that we do at 6 p.m., and then I travel around the world, sharing my story, preaching at churches all Dude, you're around. Crazy, well spoken, man. I was gonna say you better be doing something like that because you could. I mean, I'm just sitting there, like staring at you, going, I can't believe this happened to this guy. Yeah, and, and it's it's great, you know, to to be able to be used and to be able to you know help people with your story. Yeah. So many times, you know, people don't get to hear how you make mistakes and how you 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 choose and make decisions yeah. that that are right. And so that's why sharing your story or your testimony helps people but uh, we're also doing a reality show coming up i'm going to be actually just ca coming in and doing something it's called la pastors my senior pastor uh jay hazlip is doing this thing with a bunch of la pastors and uh i'm going to be filming for it this friday to do kind of like a little uh part in it but uh nice. that's going to be pretty sick on oxygen network and then, you know... We pitched them once. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the difference between my, between my life and Christian. Uh, Christian, I want to thank, thank you so much for coming down yeah, here. Man. Real quick, uh, give us... You have a website, and, and obviously, I don't have a Hasoi skateboard, and we both still skate, so I would really dig a Hasoi yeah. skateboard. Pitch, but but I kind of want to put it on the wall. Yeah, I'll yeah I mean, that is, one of the most, that is one of the most iconic-looking skateboards Absolutely. ever. It's up. There. Ever? I mean, it's I know. I, I mean, I the, the I'm Alba agreeing with Ricky the right Alba, now. The Alba <laughs> three logos, but I mean the Dogtown <laughs> stuff. But if you think of one of the most iconic skateboards, yeah. that would be the one, the Hasoi. I'd have to agree it, with you too, man. It's I'm, I'm definitely like memorable to me. towards the you know rock star crews, but you know I, I do all the Facebooks, the Twitter, the Instagrams, all that stuff, and uh, I got to give a shout out to my wife Jennifer, who stuck by my side through prison. I've got two beautiful children, Endless and Classic, I with love her. Names. And, and listen, then, classic. I love the yeah, names. Yeah, and then my older one is uh, Rhythm, and then I have another one, 25, that's James, and I'm now a, a grandfather. Wow. So, Dude. you know, life has been good to me. I got nice. 13 and a half years sober and nice. clean, you know, shooting for 14. Good on you, man. And uh, July 30th, I got, and I never talk about this, July 30th, I've got 25 years sober. Man, congratulations. Do you know, that, you do you guys, know that on your 25th year, you're allowed to drink again? I always, we always say that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of joking. Christian, thank you so much for coming yeah, by, yeah. man. Thanks, this this is really a thrill. Yeah. Uh, I know we're a little confused with the order right now. Do we want, do we want to play the commercial? We're gonna sh there's a, a big show that's coming up in two weeks, and I've gone to every single one. I want you to check this out. This is the Hoot Nanny that's happening uh, next, the weekend after next, and thanks, Christian Hasoy. <laughs> that was Dude, awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate I really that. Appreciate yeah.
dude, he's good. Christian, so I was just going to talk real quickly about the Hoot Nanny. The Hoot Nanny, I have gone every single year, and it's at an Oak Canyon Ranch in Irvine. They've always got a bunch of hot rods. They've always got a bunch of awesome bands. I've seen Jerry Lee Lewis play there. Shooter Jennings plays there. Social Distortion, Rants. I've seen so many bands play there, and you're going to go with me this time, right? I am going to go. We're going to go there, and we're going we're gonna to get some interviews. I want to try to get Ness on the show, but we'll, maybe we'll interview him at, at that thing. And What's your buddy's name that puts it on? What's his? Bill Hardy. Bill Hardy. Bill Hardy, who, yeah. by the way, walks around with a cigar to, everywhere. Didn't pay me to put that out on. I just What's did up with that, Hardy? Yeah, but we're going to go and get dialed in. Do we have Chris on the phone? Woo! How do, how do, we, how do we go from that? Right now, we go from Christian Asoy <laughs> talking about the good word, <laughs> and right now, joining us on the phone from Five Finger Death Punch, yes. talking about the bad word. We've got Chris Kale. What's up, Chris? Not much, Ricky. How are you doing, buddy? How are you, man? I'm really, really good. I uh, just got out of uh, getting my B12 shot and ready to uh, head out on the road tomorrow morning. Healthy. Dude, be- wait a minute. I've heard that that B12 stuff, Total Urban Legend doesn't do jack. Does uh, it? It lasts, for about three di- it lasts for about three days. And you and, feel like uh, you're on a Red Bull? Gone after that. But, yeah, it's, a, it's a hell of a rush. You know, we're showing in the little screen right now the video for the song that you guys did with Rob Halford, which on my radio show, Racing Rocks, we play the hell out of that song. Oh, Tell me what beautiful. it was like. Now, now did you, were you in the studio as well? Did you get to be there when you were working with Rob Halford? Yeah, uh, in there, got to sit around and listen to him uh, work his magic in the, uh, the vocal booth. And then after all that was done, I uh, went out and had sushi with him that night as well. So that was a, uh, a hell of a day. I've, I've worked with Rob Halford a lot of times. How badass and how much of a letdown is he? Wait, how much not is he? How much was he everything you wanted him to be? Oh, he definitely was. Um, I don't really think it even hit me, uh, the, the scope of working with Rob Halford, until we did the Golden Gods Awards in uh, L.A. Um, it was nice working with him in the studio, but you know that was him doing his thing. And then we did the uh, awards where we actually did Lift Me Up Live for the first time. And uh, he came out and surprised everybody did it with us. And uh, at one point after we were done, uh, I walked over to the side of the stage and our manager was right there. And I was like, I just sang background vocals with Rob Halford of Judas Priest. Absolutely incredible. Tell him 13-year-old me that that was going to happen. I never would have believed it. You think he'd go get a B12 shot with you? <laughs> I bet he'd want to give him. He'd probably, he'd probably want to give you a B12 shot. One thing I want to say about, about Chris Kale is that if you ever go to Twitter and you read Chris on Twitter, he is one of those guys that are in bands that are really, really cool with their fans. It doesn't get too like hung up in all the rock star stuff. I mean, you, Chris, as, as well as I from working with the people, you've always stayed very grounded and very appreciative of the Five Finger Death Punch fans. Oh, yeah, completely. I worked a, a long, long time to, uh, to get where I'm at right now, and uh, definitely, I mean, I'm still going to shows all the time, hanging out in the crowds. There's, uh, there's no, uh, no separation between me and the fans whatsoever. I, I am a fan. I was a fan before, and I'll be a fan after. Tell us about the Mayhem Festival that's really getting ready to get underway. It's going to be in Calif- It's going to be in Los Angeles, sort of Los Angeles. It's in San the Bernardino. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be there. I think Saturday. Yeah, uh, Saturday, June 29th, playing in San Bernardino is where it all kicks off. It's going to be uh, hot. With us and Rob Halford. Yeah, I heard it's supposed to be like 109. Wait, 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 wait. You you said Rob Halford. You and Rob Zombie. Rob Zombie is what I meant. Yeah, right. thank that's you. cool too. <laughs> Rob Halford still on the brain. <laughs> but yeah, uh, us and Rob Zombie co-headlining. Uh, Machine Head is headlining the uh, the second stage. I uh, got our friends in Battle Cross, Amont Mars, Mastodon, the Butcher Babies. It's going to be a uh, nice, incredible summer. And the crazy thing is that you're a band that, when you first started to make a little bit of noise, and by the way, NASCAR driver AJ Allmendinger, huge Five Finger Death Punch fan. I don't know if you've ever met him or not, but he is a big. I have not. No. He's a huge. I mean, he's been on my show and says that he's a big fan of Five Finger Death Punch. You guys are a band that hasn't really taken time off to rest. You just kept on working, kept on putting out records, kept on touring, and now in July you've got another record coming out, right? Exactly. Actually, we've just posted on FiveFingerDeathPunch.com. You can do the pre-orders directly from there. And uh, we're trying to go, we're shooting for number one this time. We got number three on American Capitalist when that one came out. Uh, I think our big competition on this one is uh, Robin Thicke. So it's the, the Knuckleheads versus uh, Robin Thicke as far as uh, who's going to be number one July 30th. Do you know who Robin Thicke is? Robin Thicke. 
I don't think I'm a little, you know, like a yeah, pussy guy. That's weird. You know what? You know what's really uh, yeah. awesome? This is. You think <laughs> Robin Thicke gets B12 shots too? In the what's, butt? What's I think Robin Thicke gets B12 shots that? in the butt. That may be what puts me over the top. So B12 <laughs> Maybe, shots. Yeah. That's but you know what? Number one's coming from. This is at a time that hard rock and metal are. I mean, Black Sabbath's new album, which is okay, mm-hmm. entered the charts at number one. So, yeah, what did it sell? Like 140,000, I think that's right. I don't know. I don't know what it, what it was, but, but this is great. And, and Five Finger Death Punch is a band. I mean, you guys are selling out shows, selling tons of records. By the way, want one of the t shirts that has the wrenches on it? Oh, yeah, for sure. I'll save one for you. So, so far we had Christian and Soy. We're trying to get a free skateboard. <laughs> yeah, we're we're going to try to get a, a, a t shirt. Tiny, from Tiny Five gave us a Punch coffee and cup and some uh, little uh, pins, little button package, and a sticker. Thanks, yeah. Tiny. I don't know if you heard that or not, but we had Tiny uh, do our intro today. It was pretty subpar. Did you hear that, Tiny? Yeah, he doesn't know who Tiny is. He doesn't, he doesn't care. <laughs> One thing that we do have in common, which we're going to really start to talk about a lot on the show as the summer approaches, is that Grant and I both have an enormous passion for riding motorcycles. I mean, last summer I did three countries and ten states when I did Mexico, oh, America, Canada. And, and Chris Kale is also a guy that likes to ride the motorcycles. What do you ride, man? Yes, sir. What do you ride uh, right I've now? I've got a Honda, I've got a 2005 Honda VTX 1300C. That's a big bike. My first, yeah, it's my, my first bike. I bought it uh, in 2005. I went out and did the, uh, the whole motorcycle safety course to learn how to ride the bike. And That's always those fun. Those are on like 250s. Yeah, riding around on 250s and went out shopping, sat on that one. I was like, oh. This is it. Actually, I got a funny story about my, my first motorcycle experience. Let's hear it. Uh, bought the 1300. Again, it was my first bike, so I had to deliver it out to my house. I didn't want to ride from the store out to uh, my house because, you know, traffic and whatnot being my first bike. I wanted to take it easy, nice, easy ride through the neighborhood. So that night, take it out, riding it. Everything is going good. Um, pull it in the garage, probably out for about two hours. Um, pull it in the garage that night. The next morning, I was supposed to be bartending. At around noon, so I woke up around nine, and I uh, was like, "I think I'm gonna take the bike out today again, get a little uh, little spin in before work." So threw on the camouflage shorts, had the hoodie on, and uh, as I pulled out of the uh, driveway, hit the uh, the little scoop at the bottom of the driveway, kind of threw me off. Right hand, right on that uh, accelerator. Sure enough, hit the one parked car on the street that day. Oh. Bought it on a Monday. Wrecked it on a Tuesday. Oh. Wait, I thought you said. I thought you just started off by saying, "Hey, you want to hear a funny story?" That's not very funny. Uh, Grant's got well. Grant's got funny motorcycle stories about me. Oh, like yeah. the day we decided to race Barstow to Vegas desert race, and I'd never been in the dirt. Oh man, we did on uh, adventure bikes. Oh, God. Yeah, as soon as we get yeah. into the sand, there's about a 14 mile stretch of about three feet of sand, and Ricky gets into the sand. And if you if you ride motocross, you know you got to get way back on the tail, and you really got to stay oh, yeah. on the throttle. You got to get in like third, fourth gear, and just get on it the faster you're going in the sand the better off ricky gets exactly. in the sand and just first gear and it <laughs> right crashed. i mean he's two I feet crashed in. so many times how many times do you yeah. think you crashed i honestly crashed on that ride 14 times until the bike was broken i couldn't go any further oh and every time i fell is this big triumph adventure bike every time i fell poor grant had to top put his bike up and come over and help me pick it up he, he couldn't even lift oh, up yeah. his bike i had to pick up his bike every time he crashed. we've got chris kale from yeah. five finger death punch joining us right now they're about to go on the mayhem tour been touring like nonstop. who are some of the bands that you toured with that were a really great experience to go out on the road with some of my my best friends that i made out on the road were uh the guys from hate breed I love Jamie Josta. Yeah, love Jamie. Uh, Wayne's a good friend of mine. Chris Beatty, all those guys. Uh, I, I still keep in contact with those guys all the time. Uh, um, man, I'm mean, really been fortunate to be able to kind of be friends with everybody we've gone out. But I'd, I'd have to say, hey, Breed, all the remains. Uh, again, I still keep in touch with the guys from Battlecross. Uh, they're out of Detroit. Now, be- switch engaged. Be- Just be- all those guys a couple of nights ago. Because our show is the greatest show that nobody watches, we have the opportunity to be very honest. Who did you get to tour with so far that's been a total dick? A total dick? Yeah. Um, you know, honestly, everybody's been really cool. You're such um, a liar, Chris. I, I, I'd, have, I'd have to say us. <laughs> <laughs> we like that. And you, know what, nice. you, you know what Chris posted? Tell us on Twitter. I love this picture that you posted on Twitter of the guys from, I think the band's called 30 Seconds to Mars with Jared Leto. Yeah, exactly. Tell us about that picture. Um, you know, uh, a, a fan of ours posted the picture 
And uh, I was looking at it, and I was like, wait a minute. These guys are wearing gloves at a signing. That's a hell of a message to send to your fans. Hey, I'm wearing gloves, and I don't want to touch you. It makes no sense to me. Like I said, I'm, I'm a very uh, fan-oriented guy, uh, going to stick up for the fans if I see something that, uh, that rubs me the wrong way. And seeing that picture, I was just like, Dude, they're not really? getting B12 shots, man. You're healthy hey, Chris, as a horse right Chris now. Chris Kale <laughs> is not only out there, big metal band, he will let his fans touch him, and he will touch them back. So remember that. If you're going to the Mayhem show, Chris Kale likes to be touched. Do people ever say <laughs> they want to touch Do they say they want to touch your beard? All the time, yeah. I, I don't mind if you ask first, but do not walk up and touch it without asking me. I would that, never want uh, to touch that, your that beard. I would never oh, want to. This beard's amazing. Like, Wait till you see it in person. Uh, how, how long, tell people, if, if people uh, aren't familiar with Five Finger Death Punch, dude, how long is that thing? And how much is it? Oh, that, that, sounds, that sounds that weird. Thing. That sounded like the question you asked Rob. <laughs> how long is your beard? Um, I'm guessing it goes down to past the middle of the chest, Damn. in between like the, the chest and the belly button right now. When's the last time you, you, uh, you trimmed that thing? Has it been like two years, three years? trim it. Yeah. Actually, wow. it, was, uh, it was two years ago when I first started growing the thing. So wow. I got two years growth on there. This and uh, I've got dreadlocks in there. Everyone tells me it's uh, it's very Davy Jones from uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. I get that quite a bit. Let me ask you this, because I because I asked Mark Morton this and stuff. Now do people go, dude, Duck Dynasty? Uh, funny story, actually. I went to uh, the airport one day, and uh, the count girl's like, "You look familiar." And of course, me, I'm like, "Oh, hey, you must be thinking of uh, Five Finger Death Punch." She goes, you "Ever seen the show Duck Dynasty?" I was like, ah, oh, Christ, here we go. It all starts. <laughs> well, uh, everybody, definitely check out Five Finger Death Punch. Check out, hey, we're, and, and what's your Twitter account? Because we're definitely going to ride this summer. We're going to be hooking up somehow. I'm going to be riding across the country, and for somehow you have planned it that whichever part of America I'm riding in, you're playing somewhere else. But we're going to definitely figure out how we can go riding <laughs> it sometime this summer. Tell us your Twitter account. I'm really excited. Uh, it is at 5FVP Chris Kale. A C H R I S K A E L, and go see five finger death. Uh, I'm actually oh, excited. We're taking the uh, we're taking the motorcycles out on uh, the road with us on Mayhem as well. We got a trailer and uh, going to be riding throughout the uh, the summer on the motorcycles. Mm -hmm. Me and Jason. What'd you replace the Honda with? Did you get another bike? No, we still got a Honda. You still got the Honda. Okay. No, still got the Honda. Yep, got I'm. Uh, I, I know how to work on the Hondas, and, and I've had this one for a while. So if something happens out on the road, I'm already well familiar nice. with this bike and can uh, get it back up and running again. But Tiny, luckily, ride. I've got Tiny 60, rides a Honda. Sixty thousand on it. Oh yeah, never had never had any problems out of this thing. So uh, I actually to me. I actually have a seventy four Honda CB seven fifty still. So, so there I like you go. That. Nice, Chris. Thank you very much for checking in with us. Thanks, and everybody, man. go see Five Finger Death Punch. And they're also playing at the Mayhem Festival, which is going to be all over America. And again, Chris, and I'll look forward to riding with you sometime this summer. For sure. And uh, everybody, pick up uh, the wrong side of heaven, the righteous side of hell. July 30th, or you can go ahead and get it on uh, fivefingerdeathpunch.com right now. Thanks a lot, Chris. See you, brother. Good luck, brother. Thank you so much. Good talking to you guys. Good talking to you. We went right. from Christian Asoy to Five Finger Death Punch, Chris Kale talking about the wrong side of heaven, right side of hell. What a segue. Like what a we segue. So, we have so much stuff. And I know that, that we don't have a lot of like great equipment to go from things to things. And now uh, yeah. I know that, that, that you what, – what, what did you want to do now, dude? We were going to play – should we play the – the Twitter video and talk a little bit about I'll talk about Twitter with Grant here this is this is what happens when because we don't have a producer so except me so I'm gonna we're gonna me and Grant this is what we're gonna do me and Grant are gonna talk about Twitter and then let's play the thing with Paul Menard and Trevor Bain okay so cue that up okay the Twitter one okay we'll talk about Twitter right now we'll pretend so you guys don't that's, listen that's, this, your, that's your right producer now. voice right yes there. that's my producer voice so that's Grant your voice. you're not on Twitter no I'm not why not you know what when I had the tattoo shop I did the Twitter thing that was just to kind of promote uh, the tattoo shop you know and that was pretty much it and then I <clears> got all kooked out with that with uh, whatever that's a long story but I don't know. I'm on Instagram. I, I, Instagram. You can't promote the show on Instagram. I did today. Oh, you took a picture I of, did the, today. of what we're going to be on? Yeah, I did today. But uh, you can do video on Instagram now, too. You can't. Can you do video on Twitter? Yeah, you put it to YouTube or whatever. Okay, well, Instagram is all in house now, and you can, you know, video. Did you know that? No. You can video on it now. I think it's 20, yeah. 20 seconds or so, something like that. So, for people that don't know, I also. 
work in NASCAR. I'm a huge hardcore NASCAR fan. I've been working in NASCAR for 10 years. And what we're also going to start to incorporate on this show is I'm going to just talk to drivers about various things. And I recently caught up with Trevor Bain and Paul Menard to talk about Twitter. Twitter account. Mine is uh, at Bain 21 So you have to tweet me. Okay. And who are some of the interesting people that you follow that aren't in racing? People that aren't in racing, uh, I follow Louis Giglio, who's a Christian speaker, Tim Tebow, um, a few musicians, musicians um, I like a lot of like Lecrae and stuff, he's a rapper, he's got some cool stuff on there, um, I don't know, a few athletes, so that's, that's pretty much, musicians and athletes are what I follow outside of racing. The most famous person that's ever tweeted you? Reba McIntyre tweeted me one time, I thought that was probably the coolest one, you know, I didn't expect it, I didn't even know if she knew who I was, so that was neat. Okay, give us your Twitter account one more time. At Tebane21. Okay, thank you. Twitter.com slash RCR27 PMNR. No, all you're supposed to say is like at RCR P no. See, I'm not a Twitter. I'm oh no. Don't I'm tell me you have somebody else doing I your do Twitter. Somebody Twitter. Why? What, Twitter? Wait, why aren't you doing your own Twitter? Oh uh, I don't know. Okay, too much other but you stuff. still follow other people on Twitter, like you see like what certain bands are doing or Yeah. I, so, I, not really, no. Honestly. Okay, so now we know that Paul yeah, Menard's. I, I so everybody really write Paul Menard's Twitter account. Yeah. She'll probably be the one yeah, she'll, she'll answering it. <laughs> but just we'll say, we'll get we'll on Twitter, we'll Paul. We'll work together on it, but uh, I don't physically type in stuff. So. Okay, we're all let down, but thank you very much. Trevor, Paul Menard's a big, huge heavy metal fan. I don't know if you knew that. He really is. Do you know who Paul, I, See, you don't know what Menards is, huh? The Menards chain? It's furniture? No, they're furniture? like they're, they're like, like Home I, Depot the out car. there, but like really huge. And that's yeah, I've seen the his car. pop's company. But Paul Menards, good guy. And I was talking to Grant a little bit about Twitter. And, you know, not to bring up typical current events that everybody's talking about, but this Paula Dean thing that, that she was Paula talking Dean, about. Paula Dean, yeah, and what butter, I, and, and butter, what I, butter. What I had mentioned on butter. Twitter, Paula Dean's food is probably... It, more dangerous to black people than what she's saying because of diabetes. She's probably killed more black people just the way she's talking. What there's, she there she is now. Oh, there, look, there's Paula there Dean she in, the is other, now. in the other room. I think the whole Paula Dean thing's a little bit blown out of proportion. It's kind of what's going on. Do you think on she kind of might be a racist? Well, she's a Can big, I say that? Oh, yeah, nobody watches our show. Racialist. You're a racialist. I think the whole Paula Dean thing's way blown out of proportion. This was like, you know, this was, you know, uh, excerpts from a testimony she gave. You know, she was in... Uh, some kind of mediation and you know and she's giving testimony and they took that out of context and is the media is just going cuckoo with it right now man i think it's a little weird what i had a discussion with some of you on twitter was that there's no word to describe white people that that really gets us pissed off like there's all these words like for instance an african american can say, can say, an african american can say the n word no problem some people get offended but most of them use it a lot right we don't have a word that we can talk about each other that if anybody else says it gets them pissed off. No. Like somebody says what? Cracker? I don't yeah. care. White trash? That's fine. I, I appreciate Redneck, that. That's Redneck. That's kind of a, yeah. All of, you're, you're we right. don't have one. But that's, there's a little arrogance behind that too, I think. You what? Know? Because? It, it, you're right about that though. I mean, there's a lot of people. You could, you know, you could go with any race, any, any color and everybody else. It's like a negative connotation, but it really isn't with white people. It just isn't. Is there, is there a word? I don't know. Like, for instance, there's certain words that you could call women. There's certain words you can call. And there, to me, I think there's one word that you never call a woman. And if you say... See you next Tuesday. Yes. Why that's is the that? one. That's the Why one word that? that I will never say to a woman. I think that maybe... And there's been some women that I've been mad at. Yeah. But, I've, but this, if you say the C word, that is like... You don't really That's hear, except one. for the rapper Zelia Banks, you don't even hear girls using that yeah. word. That Now, uh, women, and, and I, want, I wish we had an open forum to discuss it. I want to know, is that the word, the one word that really offends you? Is there one word that a woman could call you that would really piss you off? Like, really, like... like I don't, I'm kind of a sticks and stones guy, man. I don't really... Because I've been in some pretty heated arguments with, uh, with girls... <laughs> Uh, some uh, more than others, but you know, unless they really find that little hole in your armor, you know, other than that, it's just sticks and stones after a while because people say some pretty nasty things when they're pissed off, man. Myself included, I have, and I'm not proud of it, but you go for the jugular, but most of the time it's just sticks and stones. The one word that I hate, that the, the one word what? that one woman called me, what? And, um, and I hate, and it really hit me for some reason, I hate it when a woman called me a pussy. Pussy. That was the word 
That's it. And, and so many times a woman could say, you never and some told woman could, me that. shut up. Some woman could use that word actually in another way and it'd be like, yeah. I was gonna but say. if she says that, you know what? Today's show really was truly all over the place and we didn't really get things right. And the thing that I'm really bummed out is that I spent so much time working on this awesome thing we'll for get to Grill Em All week. Burgers. We'll get next to it. So we're going to have to play it next week. But, but for, I, know, I know that they sent a lot of people to watch our show today. Check out Grill Em All Burgers is a food truck that also has a restaurant now in Alhambra that I'm telling you is one of the most amazing burgers I've had. I ate it, and then I went to go run the next day, and I had to stop and go to the bathroom a couple times before I could run because I forgot that I had a Grill em All Napalm Death Burger the night before. I got heartburn watching that video that you sent. So me. I, I really oh, apologize for not playing the Grill em All Burgers. This weekend, I'm going to be running in a 10K in Pasadena. How about you? What are you doing this weekend? I'm working, man. I'm teaching a class out in... Uh out in Corona, teaching a little pistol class, like a high-speed pistol class to about 15 people. should be fun. Born Bo- Free Motorcycle Show. Born Free 5, yeah, out at uh, Oak Canyon Ranch. Same place as uh, uh, the Hoot Nanny. Nanny, yeah. yeah Born Free hot. Motorcycle Show, one of the best bike shows yeah, with, got, with bikes that I would actually ride. Yeah, we got Caleb out there Caleb from on Crow, Crow Custom. Uh, my favorite bike builder out there. Um, who else is out there? Harpoon and Grant from uh, uh, Freedom Machinery. Uh, Mama Dog Face and the Banana Patch Motorcycles yeah, are there. Hot dogs. Everybody, I'm the sorry that we were so all over the place. I want to thank Christian Asoy. I want to thank Chris Kale from Five Finger Death Punch. I want to thank Tiny. I want to thank the dude. Please, everybody, tell us about our show next week. We'll have Grill Mall Burgers. Tiny, get a B12 shot next week so you can do that intro a little bit more. <laughs> Please, everybody, help spread the word, okay? We are The Fork Show, and we'll get our website. And everybody, thank you very much for listening. We're working we on it. We appreciate your comments. We're working on it. We're working Bye. on it.